This episode celebrates the legacy of another most remarkable woman who, after escaping slavery, chose to risk her life and freedom over and over again in order to be able to um, conduct others from slavery to freedom through the Underground Railroad. The legacy of care and commitment to improving the lot of all that she came across that Harriet Tubman has left us should continue to inspire not just people of African descent, but people of all races. Welcome to another episode of the Sankofa Pan-African series. Um, please, if you have not yet subscribed, take a moment to do so. Thank you. The woman that we now know as Harriet Tubman was born in Dorchester County, Maryland, in the U.S. around 1820. Her parents were slaves on a plantation. Her mother was um, Harriet Green and her father was Benjamin Ross. At birth, she was actually given the name Araminta, but later chose to adapt, adopt uh, her mother's first name, Harriet, and then um, the last name of her husband, Tubman, when she got married. According, um, according to um, accounts uh, uh, found, a horrible incident which occurred when um, young Harriet was 12 left a psychological and physical mark on her for the rest of her life. Um, when she was 12, she threw herself between an overseer and a fugitive slave. The overseer was actually trying to throw a heavy weight at the fugitive slave when um, Harriet, uh, Harriet threw herself between them. Now, the weight then hit her on the head and then, um, in fact, knocked her unconscious and left her mad for life. Um, as a result of that uh, incident, which broke her skull, um, it meant that she suffered from serious headaches and necrolepsy for the rest of her life. Uh, some sufferers of necrolepsy uh, experience sudden, uncontrollable urge to, to fall asleep. And then they also hallucinate. Now, Harriet Tubman had vivid visions and hallucinations, which she interpreted um, or believed were religious visions because she was a staunch uh, Christian. She was a little more fortunate than most other um, slaves in that not only did she know her parents, um, they were allowed for a while, a certain semblance of family life. And um, so she had about eight siblings um, and must have developed a sense of family. Unfortunately, slavery, uh, being the evil that it was, uh, would not let them continue to enjoy, enjoy this uh, semblance of a family life by leaving them together. So slavery forced the family apart when the owner of the plantation started selling off um, his slaves. Now, around 1849, when Harriet heard rumors that uh, she was about to be sold, uh, sold off away from the only home she had known and her, uh, and her family, she decided to escape. She then fled to Philadelphia leaving behind her husband, parents, and siblings. Um, not, not, not long after she actually escaped um, to, to Philadelphia, she then started uh, sneaking back into Baltimore, Maryland. So she started conducting people to freedom through the Underground Railroad, starting with members of her family. So just what was the Underground Railroad? Well, some accounts say that the Underground Railroad system started gradually after a provision 
was made in an act of um, 1793. Other accounts say that um, the Underground Railroad system actually started after a few enslaved um, Africans in America first managed to escape to Canada by themselves. Um, they then sent word uh, back to their folk um, that freedom could be had in Canada or British um, um, North America, as Canada was also known at the time. Now, um, also, following the war of 1812, enslaved servants of um, U.S. military officers from the South brought back news to their folks at home um, that there were free people in British North America. As Canada, as, like I said, Canada at that time was also known as British uh, uh, North America. Now, this uh, news about free people encouraged a lot of slaves to start trying to escape by making the, their way northwards. Now, the Underground Railroad System, as we, should, uh, we all should know, was not a real railway system. Rather, it was a secret network of uh, people who wanted to abolish slavery. And the underground road system was uh, made up of people and uh, safe places uh, where um, fugitive slaves could um, take some refuge and then be conducted from one place to another. Uh, in safety until they get to um, parts of the U.S. where slavery had been abolished or British North uh, America. Now, um, so abolitionists um, included free black people, escaped slaves, white and indigenous sympathizers. The Underground Railroad system was greatly strengthened by a group of abolitionists uh, who were based mainly in Philadelphia, uh, Pennsylvania. Within a few decades, the underground um, escape network had grown into a well-organized and dynamic uh, system. The term Underground Railroad came into use around the 1830s. Back to Harriet uh, Tubman, who was one of the most successful conductors of fugitives um, of enslaved people to freedom. After the first um, journey back to Maryland, uh, during which she led her sister and two children to freedom, she made several more forays and ended up conducting hundreds of slaves along the Underground Railroad system into Canada. She was an extraordinarily courageous woman and was nicknamed Moses because just like the biblical Moses who led the, the Israelites um, uh, from slavery, she led groups of her people from slavery to freedom. It is believed that she never once lost a fugitive slave that she was leading to freedom. Harriet Tubman lived uh, for some time in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada, uh, where she had she managed to bring every member of her family, her parents, her siblings, and um, and their children, the entire family. She brought them to safety to live in a. Um, St. Catharines in Ontario, Canada. Uh, she then moved back to the U.S. after the American Civil War in 1865 uh, and uh, settled in Auburn, New York, where she started. She would not, in fact, that um, the fact that slavery was over was not enough for her. She was so committed to improving the lot of others that she started taking in orphans and old people you know, um, into her house in, uh, in Auburn, New York. Um, she died on the 10th of March in 1913. Thank you for being a part of this episode. Um, 
please don't forget to subscribe if you've not yet done so like our videos and please feel free to share with your contacts see you next time